Pittsburgh Pirate fans are not allowed nice things. Pirate star center fielder and all-star Brian Reynolds has says he wants out of Pittsburgh. And given that ownership, who's to blame him? I'd want out too. Now, Brian Reynolds is likely in the peak of his career or just entering that. So he is a very valuable commodity if the Pirates are going to trade him. And given the options, I think this is the best time to maximize their value for Brian Reynolds. And I'm going to break it down with eight possibilities of where I think Brian Reynolds could go and the value the Pirates could get back. So let's go. That's a drive to right. Forget about it. Brian Reynolds is not going to be in the prime of his career when the Pirates are finally ready to contend if that ever happens. So when I'm taking a look at these trades using MLB trade value, I'm looking at trades that are going to fit what the Pirates need now and what they're going to need when they're ready to contend. You take a look at catcher, Henry Davis, Andy Rodriguez. They probably don't need a young catcher. First base is something I definitely looked at and top hitters that fit that first base DH role are said definitely players that I looked at. Second base, not so much. I think Rodolfo Castro and in a year or two, Nick Gonzalez fit very well for the Pirates in their rebuild. The left side of the infield as well, shortstop third base, O'Neill Cruz and Key Brian Hayes, you have to assume are going to be the left side of the infield when the Pirates are ready to contend. The question is going to be the outfield. So when I was looking at these trades, definitely was looking for outfielders, young outfielders, because the Pirates really only one guy that I think they can even maybe consider as a linchpin, and that's Jack Sawinski. There's some other guys out there that haven't established themselves in the majors, and you could argue Sawinski hasn't either, but he has a little bit more track record now after last season than some of the other guys, so I definitely consider him part of this rebuild, but they definitely need some more outfield depth to fill in for this rebuild. The other thing I think the Pirates have to get if they trade Brian Reynolds is pitching. They have got to get quality starting pitching that is close to the majors. We're not talking guys in A ball. We're looking at double A or more in particular triple A guys that are right on the cusp of being in the majors because the Pirates have some young starters in Rones and Contreras, Mitch Keller, Quinn Priester, guys that are right on that edge of being very, very good. Now, you could argue Keller, I get that, but Contreras and Priester and those guys are getting there very, very soon, so you need some young arms. So we're going to jump into our eight breakdowns, talk about who I think would fit for the Pirates, who I think the prospects that would fit coming back to Pittsburgh, as well as talk about some teams that would be fits, but maybe don't have the prospect capital that really matches up with the Pirates. So option one, here it is. Side of, of baseball and oh, did he get it? Ooh. Out to center, carrying and go. In option one, I've got the Houston Astros. The Astros need a left fielder. I don't think they're going to bring back Michael Brantley at this time. They haven't anyway, so they need to fit Jordan Alvarez more into that DH role and could really use another bat in left field. Now the Astros have been disinclined to spend money, and here's the big thing with Brian Reynolds. He's got three years of control left and he's locked in at 12 million this year on a contract he signed last before last season with the Pirates. So I think Houston hits very well. Now coming back to Pittsburgh, I think they need to consider one name and then build around it. And that's Hunter Brown. Hunter Brown is the number one prospect for the Astros right-handed pitcher. He got some time in the majors last year as the starter and in the bullpen. He has tremendous, tremendous stuff and should be the focus for the Pirates to try and get Hunter Brown out of Houston if they're going to deal Brian Reynolds. Now, the other guys that fit along there, Yiner Diaz, I think, would have to come back. He's a catcher first base. I like the first base option more there. Big time power hitter, 25 home runs, 96 RBIs, so the 306 average between double and triple A last year. He's almost ready for the bigs. Number two, prospect Drew Gilbert he's an outfielder also a quality hitter who's got a little bit of speed a 936 OPS in 10 games last year in a ball doesn't fit as well in the Pirates timeline but still a quality player that I think they should try and target and then their fourth prospect for Houston Pedro Leon an outfield second base I look at him more as an outfielder he fits very well in center field a raw Cuban talent, great speed, who put up a 796 OPS as a very young player in AAA. 
I think Houston has a lot to offer. That would be a massive haul for the Pirates, and it matches up very well with what the, the, they need. I don't know if Houston would part with all that talent. That is a lot. When you look at the trade value, it really does balance out. I think this is the time to shoot big for the Pirates. That one's looped into right field. It's going to dunk in for a base hit. Option number two is the LA Dodgers. I think the Dodgers really fit here because of the club control of the three years to Reynolds. They've lost Cody Bellinger. He's moved on. They're looking for some outfield pieces. They're looking to rebuild some infield pieces. The Dodgers are rich in prospects, so I think they're a great fit here in acquiring Brian Reynolds. And I have them coming back with three prospects. So let's take a look here. Dodgers number three prospect, Miguel Vargas, a third base outfielder. I look at him more as an outfielder. The bat definitely plays a 915 OPS last year. 17 home runs, 82 RBIs, 16 steals. I think he fits more of a left field or even first base option. The defense isn't great. He's the number three prospect for the Dodgers. The number six one is Ryan Pipet. I've included him in the past. Nasty, nasty fastball changeup combination. 2.56 ERA last year, mainly in AAA. He's very close to the majors, as is Gavin Stone, the number seven prospect. Fastball slider change. He's got a low release point, kind of develops a bit of a higher spin rate, a funny angle for pitchers to produce. But he produced a 1.48 ERA with 168 Ks last year. The Pirates need pitching. I think the Dodgers would be a great fit to try and find some, especially some young guys. You include Vargas in there as a future left fielder or maybe a first baseman. I think this matches up very well for the Pirates. That's drilled deep to right field. Fair ball. It's a tie game. It's a tie game. Number three option, the San Francisco Giants. Now, here's the thing with the Giants. They don't have a real deep farm system. And I think Marco Luciano, their top prospect and future shortstop, is basically untradeable for the Giants. The Pirates are not going to be able to get him. You start throwing some other pieces around. I don't think it's as strong an offer, but there's still an offer I think the Giants could make here. And it kind of looks starts around their big-time pitching prospect, Kyle Harrison. Harrison is the number two prospect for the Giants, a left-handed pitcher. Pitching primarily at AA last year to a 311 ERA with 127 Ks in 81 innings. He has that very quality fastball slider combination, but he does struggle with control. And this is where I think the match doesn't work as well with the Pirates. He's not as major league ready as we saw with the Astros and Dodgers. Some other nice pieces along the way would be Luis Matos, the number three prospect for the Giants, an outfielder who played primarily at high A ball. Nice balance here, but he only produced a 636 OPS, 12 homers, 11 steals. That's a bit of a project, as is Carson Wisenhunt, the number seven prospect for the Giants. Another lefty who is an A-ball. He's a second round prospect who came with a terrific changeup, but the Giants just don't have that same type of depth in their offer. I want to include them here because I think they are very much going to be in on the Reynolds sweepstakes. However, I don't see them having the pieces that they can really move out to the Pirates to merely make this work. So I would lean Astros or Dodgers before this Giants offer if I'm the Pirates, but I think the Giants are really gonna try and get a deal done. Board. So you get 30 seconds to make as many shots as you can. Brett Suter is already- The Tampa Bay Rays are up next and they've really changed the last few years. They seem to be more willing to spend some money and really make a splash, whether it be in free agency or the trade market. The three years of control is going to be very appealing to the lower budget raise. I think this makes a lot of sense for Tampa Bay. And when you start putting their prospects up there in terms of what the Pirates could get back, I think the Rays have a lot they can offer to the Pirates to get this type of deal done. Taking a look here, you got the number one prospect for the Rays, Taj Bradley. Right-handed pitcher, little cup of coffee in the big leagues last year, but a stellar fastball cutter combination. 257 ERA last year. 141 Ks in 133 innings at AAA. Just a really polished prospect, very much ready for the majors, and could see a lot of time in the Pirates rotation even this year if this deal was done. You take a look at Kyle Manzardo, the number four prospect for the Rays. First baseman, AA last year, 22 home runs. The big thing to him, 59 walks and 65 strikeouts. Really understands the zone. Quality hitter, 93 games. A 1043 OPS, such a quality hitter. This makes a lot of sense. From the Pirates, 
I'm looking at potentially these two prospects and maybe a bit of a throw in there. Mason Auer, a number 11 prospect for the Rays, an outfielder who played primarily at A ball. A little bit of speed there, a little bit of contact, kind of a nice balanced outfielder. Bit away from the major leagues, but would be a nice little add in if the Pirates could get something. But I think Taj Bradley and Kyle Manzardo are two guys they could really target from the Rays. Runner goes, got a great jump, and it's a shot up the middle of base hit. They can't get Reynolds out. You want to talk about teams that are in win now mode and need some outfield help? How about the Texas Rangers? Beautiful infield they've built there. Now they got Jacob deGrom, Jake Odorizzi, Andrew Heaney. They've built up the rotations well. That'll move some guys in the bullpen, which helps them out there as well. But really, outside of Adolis Garcia, they need some help in the outfield. And this is where Brian Reynolds' trade could really help out with Texas. So taking a peek at what the Rangers might be willing to move to acquire a talent like Reynolds, you've got their number three, four, and six prospects. Evan Carter at number three, outfielder double A. A really, very much a hit and run type guy, an 886 OPS, 12 home runs, 28 stolen bases in 106 games. Just adds a lot of talent and balance. Owen White is their number four prospect, a righty at double A last year. Got all the pitches, fastball, curveball, slider, change. 359 ERA, but funny enough, he was better at double A than A ball. 104 Ks, 80 innings, nice talented starter. Maybe a little too far away from the majors for the Pirates liking, but still a very good prospect. And the number six prospect, Brock Porter from the Rangers. Big, big time fastball. Someone who could move very quickly through the system. He was a fourth round draft pick just last year with a high, high bonus. Porter is the type of guy, once you get him in the system, he's already very refined. He moved quickly through the minors and is someone that I think that the Pirates could really target. Maybe even the potential long man of the bullpen in maybe at a year or two. Very nice prospect. I think the Rangers have a decent offer here. That's avoiding the likes of Jack Leiter and Kumar Rocker who would be available. I don't think Texas is looking to move those guys, but Texas does have a lot to offer to the Pirates. Pirates best hitter, and it's a fair ball. Inside the bag, going to kick up against the sidewall. Hey, I'm first and foremost a Blue Jays fan, and the Jays have been talked a lot in this Brian Reynolds sweepstakes. They need a left-handed hitter to play center field. Brian Reynolds is a switch hitter who plays center field. He is the probably ultimate guy that the Blue Jays could fit in for next season in this type of trade. Problem with the Blue Jays, they don't have the type of prospects that the Astros or Dodgers or Rangers could offer. But I think if you package enough of them together, there's a deal to be made here. If you include the Blue Jays' number one prospect now, Ricky Tiedemann, very quick moving lefty through the system at double A primary last year, 217 ERA, 117 Ks in 78 innings, very refined repertoire, very nice balance in his pitches. Tiedemann would make a lot of sense for the Pirates. And keep in mind, Ben Sherrington comes from the Blue Jays system. He's the GM of the Pirates. So he's going to understand these prospects maybe more than most GMs. He wouldn't understand first rounder Brandon Berea, a left-handed pitcher who didn't play last year. But he's the number three right prospect for the Blue Jays, their first round pick last year. I think Berea would make a lot of sense for the Pirates. Another one, Arelvis Martinez, the number two guy, a shortstop third baseman who doesn't make a lot of sense for the Pirates, but a double A last year, 732 OPS with 30 home runs. Martinez is a hyped, hyped prospect in the Blue Jays system, but I think he's the type of guy who could turn into a first base prospect because his defense isn't that good. So he would make sense for the Pirates that way. And lastly, Josver Zuleta. Number five prospect, a right-handed pitcher, who I think is going to be a reliever because of health concerns. Big, big arm, big fastball. Zuleta would make a lot of sense for the Pirates, who really like to use those multi-inning relievers, as we saw last year with Will Crow. So I think the Blue Jays do have enough pieces to offer to the Pirates. Will they win out here in these sweepstakes? I don't know, but there are some pieces there to make a big deal to acquire Brian Reynolds. With back trouble. Reynolds drives one deep to right center. Even Thomas can't get to that one. And Brian Reynolds. We got two to go, and you know I had to include the evil empire. The New York Yankees need an outfielder to play left field or center field. Reynolds' track record has been mainly as a center fielder lately, 
but his defense has been up and down, and he would fit very well in left field. He's played a very good left field for the Pirates before, and at PNC Park, that is a massive outfield in left field, so I think he would fit very well in Yankee Stadium. And the Yankees have some pieces that would make a lot of sense for the Pirates. Taking a look at number two prospect, Jason Dominguez, the outfielder at AA, who's had a ton of hype. 836 OPS last year, 16 home runs, 37 stolen bases. The knock against Dominguez is the 128 Ks, but he did walk 72 times. That's a big number in the minor leagues, so he is quickly learning the strike zone and should cut down on the strike zones. Number five prospect, another outfielder, Everson Pereira, at AA last year as well, 819 OPS. Again, 14 home runs, 21 steals, a very nice balance there. But just like Dominguez, 124 strikeouts, and he didn't have the walks. So that would concern me in that sense. And you got to throw in a couple of pitchers here because the Pirates need pitching. How about number eight and nine prospects for the Yankees? Will Warren and Clayton Beater. Warren has a very nice slider, 391 ERA, but he has some control issues. And Beater had a 456 ERA last year, but he's a potential fastball, curveball style reliever, maybe a multi inning guy. So I think the Yankees have some pieces there. That avoids Oswaldo Peraza and Anthony Volpe, who right now I think the Yankees would want to hang on to. Unless, of course, they sign one of those big-name shortstops a la Carlos Correa or Dansby Swanson that are still out there. But for right now, I think they're looking at Peraza and Volpe as the future. So I think they'd have to include a Jason Dominguez to make this trade happen. And I've heard a lot from Yankee fans of Austin Hayes, a catching prospect who's very highly rated in the Yankee system. It's just not what the Pirates need at this time. They've got a couple guys that way. Just don't make sense. So I think it's got to be Dominguez in this type of trade. In the air to left center. Yadiel Hernandez chasing it back towards the track. And Brian Reynolds has done it again. Last but not least, the Cleveland Guardians. You want a sneaky team in all this? I think the Guardians could really make a push here for Reynolds, who would fit in left or center field there. Give them some added offensive abilities. You have Jose Ramirez being backed right now by now new signing Josh Bell. You throw Reynolds in there and you start to really build a nice core of the offense. They've always excelled with pitching. They've got a ton of depth in their farm system. So I think Cleveland makes a lot of sense. And when you put together a package of Gavin Williams, the number three ranked prospect at AA, big fastball, very clean delivery. He put up a 196 ERA, a .95 whip, which means he's bringing that fastball in the zone. A lot of swing and miss there. The number seven prospect, Chase DeLauder, an outfielder who's a first-round pick. Last year, he's a very much considered a five-tool talent. Would be a very nice player for the Pirates to pick up a few years away, but someone who could quickly move through the system. And number six prospect, Tanner Bibby. Another right-hander who at AA had it's a ton of command. That 217 ERA, he's got all four pitches. That fastball, curveball, slider, changeup combination that we see from so many guys. I really think Cleveland is a very sneaky team in all this because Reynolds has three years of club control left. That fits very well into the system in Cleveland. They wouldn't be spending a ton of money. And if they ran out of players and they were really dealing with an issue of falling off from last year... They could then trade Reynolds in a year or two now and recoup some prospect capital for another swing at things a little bit later down the years. So I think Cleveland Guardians make a ton of sense. This year, six for six. Drive to right center field. Anchor down. Clear the deck. Cannonball coming. Buckos win it. First career home run walk off. So some of you are going to come out and say, Shane, you've missed some teams. What about the Padres? They need an outfielder. The Padres don't really match up in terms of prospects. How about Atlanta? They need a left fielder. Same thing. There are some teams out there that are looking for the type of player that Reynolds is, but they don't have the prospect capital left anymore to really make this type of trade. So when I'm breaking it down, these are my eight biggest predictions. If I think there's others out there, they just didn't match up. So I think Cleveland is the sneaky pick, but I think the LA Dodgers are a team that are really going to make this push it makes a lot of sense for them to get some control and control the prime years of a player, which they've been doing a lot of. You think of the trade for Trey Turner and Mookie Betts. They're getting the primes of those players' career. And even though Turner left, they got the best out of them they could. 
I think Reynolds would make a lot of sense in Dodger blue in left or center field. And I think the trade would make a lot of sense in my looking at the prospects that get it back. So those are my picks. Let me know what you think down below. Make sure you comment down there who you think Brian Reynolds is going to. Thank you so much for making it all the way to the end of another MLB video here on 3 Up, 3 Down. Greatly appreciate all the support. Please make sure you hit that subscribe button. We greatly appreciate all the subscribers. We're on our way to 100 subscribers. We hope to get there soon. And with your support, I greatly appreciate all of that. And we will get there soon. If you're wanting to watch some more videos from 3 Up, 3 Down, make sure you check out my shorts playlist. I've been adding more and more shorts as the MLB offseason has been going on. And make sure you go back and check out our latest full-length video, which deals with our Fantasy Baseball Draft Spectacular and some consequences that I had to pay because I lost to my girlfriend. So make sure you go check out that video. As always, thank you for all the support. Take care, everyone.